Hi everyone, our subject today is acute abdominal pain in pediatric. Abdominal pain is a subjective symptom that can originate from intra-abdominal organ or secondary to non-abdominal source like pneumonia, referred pain, or systemic infection like viral or group A streptococcal. History Onset and duration, acute versus chronic, age of onset, necrotizing enterocolitis common in newborn and premature, mal rotation, valvulus, in first month of life, intussusception in infant and toddler, foreign body ingestion in young children. Triggering and relieving factors, meals, Spice, specific food like lactose or sucrose, general position, knee pain bent, <clears throat> can be relieving in acute appendicitis. Pain relieved by defecation in constipation versus pain worsened by defecation in colitis. Bowel pattern and stool appearance, stool frequency and consistency. Diarrhea versus constipation, urgency or nocturnal diarrhea in colitis, presence of bloating and excessive flatulence in giardiasis, carbohydrate malabsorption, presence of mucus may be normal but can be associated with colitis, perirectal disease and in inflammatory bowel disease. Bowel pattern and stool appearance. Hematochesia, fissure, hemorrhoid, polyp, colitis, hinoxial line perfora, if a bright red current jelly appearance suspected intussusception, melina, upper GIT bleeding or ulcer, pale, a colic stool, hepatic or biliary disease, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, if postprandial indicative of upper GI condition, may indicate extra-intestinal disease like UTI, urethropelvic junction obstruction, pneumonia. Hematemesis suggests ulcer disease, malarious tear, lower esophagus. Bilious emesis indicate intestinal obstruction, valvulus, intussusception, necrotizing enterocolitis in a newborn. Dysphagia, food impaction, in older children, suspected eosinophilic esophagitis, GERD, fever, acute infection, acute appendicitis, a chronic inflammatory process, weight loss, growth failure, delayed puberty, and chronic inflammatory process, celiac disease. Extra-intestinal symptoms, dysuria, skin rash, atopy may point to eosinophilic process, Perpera, abdominal pain may be first symptom of hinoxial line perpera. Respiratory symptoms in pneumonia, arthralgia and in inflammatory bowel disease, hinoxial line perpera. Pre existing condition, infectious diarrhea precede hemolytic uremic syndrome, hemoglobinopathy or cystic fibrosis, risk factor for cholecystitis. Exposures. Lead iron in young children, a travel, well, water, pets in giardiasis, insect bite in hinoxial line perpera, non steroidal anti inflammatory drug use in gastritis, tetracycline in pill esophagitis. Dietary history assess fiber and fluid intake, excessive use of sugar free gum in sorbitol malabsorption. Intake of sucrose, fructose, or lactose-containing food in various disaccharides deficiencies, mostly lactose intolerance. Prior abdominal surgery history and adhesion. Family history of inflammatory bowel disease, H. pylori, celiac disease, atopy, migraine. Social history and identification of stressor school attendance, sign of mood disorder. Physical examination. In an acute setting, an abdominal exam may be needed to be serially performed as location of pain may change over time. 
Skirrash, eczema, purpura, other sign of a chronic disease including pallor, clapping or edema. Right upper quadrant pain in inspiration in cholecystitis, flank tenderness and renal pathology. Sign of acute appendicitis, exquisite pain at McPerny point on percussion or palpation, involuntary guarding, Rovzing sign, palpation of lower left quadrant, sowa sign, obturator sign, rebound tenderness, peritoneal inflammation, pain on movement, walking or jumping. Pain may be relieved temporarily if the appendix ruptures followed by signs of peritonitis. Rectal exam, perianal examination may reveal skin tags, fissures, constipation and inflammatory bowel disease, perianal abscess and inflammatory bowel disease, hemorrhoid, peritoneal irritation in appendicitis, peritonitis, hematochesia, inflammatory bowel disease, hinoxial line purpura, perianal disease, fecal retention, abnormal sphincter tone, anal structure, absent relaxation of internal anal sphincter suggesting anal achalasia. The genitourinary exam may reveal a hair tourniquet, hernia, or testicular torsion. In an adolescent female, a pelvic exam may reveal vaginal discharge, bleeding, lesion, or cervical motion tenderness. How to approach to acute pain in pediatrics after performing history and physical examination? Is there sign or symptom suggestive of acute abdomen present? If it is yes, surgical consultation. Differential diagnosis may include intestinal perforation, rupture appendicitis, peptic ulcer, peritonitis, intussusception, valvulus, rupture spleen, ectopic pregnancy, ovarian or testicular torsion, strangulated hernia, ruptured aortic aneurysm. If there is no sign of symptom suggestive of acute abdomen, then according to the location of the pain. Upper abdomen, consider ultrasound, MLA, MLAs, lipase, liver function test, chest x-ray, differential diagnosis, hepatitis, acute pancreatitis, cholecystitis, cholecystitis, Fitzhugh-Crutis syndrome, Subdiaphragmatic abscess, pneumonia, splenic hemorrhage, or trauma. Lower abdomen, consider urine analysis, CBC, KUB, ultrasound, CT, chest x ray with or without urine pregnancy test, with or without pelvic exam. Differential diagnosis, appendicitis, constipation, mesenteric adenitis. UTI, pyelonephritis, pelvic inflammatory disease, pneumonia, pregnancy, ectopic intrauterine, intestinal obstruction, incarcerated hernia, urolithiasis, psoas abscess. If a pain diffuse periumbilical, consider KUB, ultrasound, CT, chest x-ray, differential diagnosis, constipation, gastroenteritis, enterocolitis, mesenteric adenitis, trauma, child abuse, pneumonia, appendicitis, intestinal obstruction, aerophagia, bacterial peritonitis, food poisoning, inoxial line purpura. If pain, referred pain, back, groin, or shoulder, consider urine analysis, ultrasound, CT, MLAs, lipase, liver function test, uh, chest x-ray, Differential diagnosis, pyelonephritis, urolithiasis, cholelithiasis, cholecystitis, pancreatitis, splenic hemorrhage, or trauma. Recommended investigation in acute pain, urine analysis and culture to confirm UTI, stool culture for bacterial gastroenteritis, viral antigen detection for rotavirus, full blood count, Leukocytosis suggests inflammatory or infectious cause, serum amylase, lipase for suspected pancreatitis, liver function test to diagnose hepatitis, blood glucose, urea, and electrolyte, and blood gas for DKA, 
Abdominal plane X-ray confirm impacted stool masses in constipation. Signs of bowel obstruction. Abdominal ultrasound for suspected renal or gallbladder stone. Barium enema or air contrast enema for cases with suspected intussusception. Top tips. Abdominal examination should be performed with the extreme gentleness and compassion. Careful hands of uh, inspection being the first step, followed by a non-intimidating position of sitting down or kneeling to be at the same level with the child. A young child is best examined in a parent's arm or lap. Distracting the child while palpating the abdomen is very helpful. A student or postgraduate doctor in an examination who hurts the child while examining the abdomen should expect to fail. It is worth asking the child to point with his or her hand a finger to the area where it hurts most. The closer the pain to the umbilicus, the less likely to be organic disease. The use of sedative or analgesic does not increase the risk of misdiagnosis. Urine analysis is essential in a febrile child with acute abdominal pain, particularly if the fever has no localized source. Children with appendicitis present initially with vague abdominal pain, poorly localized in the periumbilical area, followed by nausea. Within 6 to 48 hours, the pain migrates to the right lower quadrant, followed by vomiting and fever. Topical, topical abdominal in gastroenteritis <coughs> uh, is non distended and soft, mildly tender, with a mid-abdominal cramping, but little or no gargling. <coughs> Vomiting usually precedes the diarrhea by as much as 12 to 48 hours. Sorry, 24 hours. In cases of mesenteric adenitis, stool culture for bacteria Yersinia should be performed. <coughs> Michel's diverticulum affects 2% of the population, and these 2% become symptomatic. About 60% of diverticula contain heterotropic gastric or endometrial tissue that can cause symptom. <coughs> Red flag in acute abdomen, the clinician, uh, clinician is killed must be used to differentiate between a self-limited process, viral gastroenteritis, constipation, and more like a threatening surgical emergency like intussusception. Overlooking a serious organic etiology is a major concern. Bilious vomiting must always be taken seriously because of possible malrotation or valvulus. Extra abdominal condition, tonsillitis, lower lobe pneumonia, testicular disease, spine or hip synovitis can produce abdominal pain mimicking abdominal emergencies like appendicitis. Examination of these sites is essential. Be aware that a young child with the appendicitis may present with diarrhea only. Children with mesenteric adenitis may present with acute abdominal pain in the lower quadrant of the abdomen mimicking appendicitis, but pain is more diffuse in uh, mesenteric adenitis. If in doubt, appendectomy should be considered. Because of difficulty in evaluating the abdomen in young children with appendicitis, they often present with acute abdomen due to perforation. Perforation rates are higher in this age group. Children typically have a longer history of pain, greater systemic effect, high fever, more generalized tenderness, and absence of bowel sound. 
a young child with mild abdominal pain and vomiting who has a clinical signs of dehydration but no ketones in the urine should be investigated to rule out an inborn error of metabolism. Peers and pitfalls When you are suspecting a surgical abdomen, consult surgery early even if the definitive diagnosis has not been made. Abdominal pain in adolescent female warrant a pregnancy test and pelvic exam. Analgesic should be used judiciously when dealing with acute cases of abdominal pain. Missing an extra abdominal cause of abdominal pain. Not exploring the history adequately. Normal to the patient may not be normal to others. Thank you for